Welcome to another art school video. Today's lesson is all about balance. Let's get started. The principles of design help us organize the elements in an artwork. Think of the elements of art as the ingredients or items needed for a dish. If the elements are the ingredients, then the principles will be the recipe. Recipes tell us how to prepare the ingredients and how to cook them. Just like recipes, the principles of design act as rules. They tell us why, how, and when the elements of art should be used. Now, let's learn a little bit more about the principle balance. Balance deals with the distribution of the visual weight in a composition. This refers to where and how the elements are arranged within the artwork. Balance makes an artwork look stable. Artworks can have symmetrical, asymmetrical, or radial balance. Symmetrical balance is also known as formal balance. And the first example of symmetrical balance is called pure symmetry, where both sides are identical. This means that the image is mirrored on the opposite side. The human body is an example of pure symmetry. Approximate symmetry is another type of symmetrical balance, where relatively equal visual weights are placed on either side although neither side is exactly the same. Next, we have asymmetrical balance, also known as informal balance. This occurs when there is an unequal distribution of weight as objects are different on both sides. Balance is achieved based on qualities such as color, value, and position. Radial balance is classified by a circular design that starts from the center and radiates outward. Radial balance can often be seen in nature. A mandala is another example of radial balance. Here are a few guidelines or pointers to consider when trying to achieve a sense of balance within your artwork. Thicker lines have more visual weight than thinner lines. Larger objects have more visual weight than smaller elements. Filled objects have more visual weight than contour or outlined objects. Warmer colors advance into the foreground and appear heavier than cool colors, which recede into the background. Darker colors also have more visual weight than lighter colors. Rougher or busier textures and patterns have more visual weight than smooth and simpler textures and patterns. To achieve a sense of balance, you must use both the positive and negative space in such a way that the composition feels stable and pleasing to look at. Now, let's take a closer look at some artworks. Can you tell what type of balance is used here? Yes, asymmetrical balance. This painting can be considered asymmetrical because both halves of the painting are not identical. Although both animals are the same, they are not the same size. On the left side, we have a much bigger elephant as compared to the right side where we have a smaller elephant. An even greater sense of balance is achieved because of the moon. The moon was placed on the right side where the smaller elephant is located, adding more visual weight to the right side, helping this piece become more balanced. The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh uses a similar approach. Can you tell what type of balance is used here? 
It's radial balance because the leaves emerge from the center and go outwards in all directions. So, the next time that you are creating a drawing, painting, or design, remember to ensure that your piece is balanced. Balance is not only achieved by having identical or similar objects, it is also created by paying attention to the colors, values, and textures of objects, as well as the use of positive and negative space and where objects are placed within the composition. That wraps up our lesson on balance. As always, I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching. Let me know what topic I should cover next. Shop my art books on Amazon, my art worksheets on TPT, visit my Society6 store, follow me on social media, and like, comment, and subscribe for more art content.